for waiting. We were, you know, just working through some interesting technical challenges, mostly me adding the wrong invite link, uh, link to this meeting. So, um, yeah, we're we're here with with another fireside chat as part of um, as part of backdrop build for anyone who's kind of listening in now or you know in the recording who's not aware of backdrop backdrop build. We're we're helping you know launch a ton of new projects in crypto and AI. So actually. Next week, we should have a couple hundred new products launching. Everyone's kind of, you know, some people probably not joining today because they're they're shipping like you know last few lines to the you know, production before they hit, hit you know launch next week. But we've got a, a pretty sweet um, chat today with with three builders uh, talking about where to build next in, in crypto. By the way, Smack is here, but I can't figure. I'm not smart enough to figure out how to get his uh, face to show up in the thing. So. There will be a sort of voiceover of Smack at, at various times throughout the the call. I have to imagine it. Anyways, I'll, I'll shut up. Um, maybe let, let's start with some some intros. So um, Smack is our you know benevolent voiceover. Do you want to get us get us started? Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. By the way, this is uh, right. it's gonna be fun. Um, yeah. So Smack, I'm an investor at Compound. Um, yeah, we're a kind of like deep tech venture, early stage venture fund. Um, one of those verticals we spend time on is crypto, and that's where I spend uh, 100% of my time. So, um, yeah, I mean, very thesis driven, research, research focused. Um, we like really cool, weird, novel, funky stuff um, and have a lot of interest in crypto. I think this tech is like super cool and will be around for decades. So. Um, yeah, excited to chat with uh, some other folks that I've, I've actually never met. So, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, we like the funky stuff as well. Speaking of funky stuff, Zern, uh, <laughs> hit us with it. <laughs> you want me to kick it? Uh, yeah. 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 So, my name's Soren. I'm the, one of the co founders and CEO of Titles. Uh, we build uh, creative tools powered by artist trained uh, AI models. So, we work with artists to help them maintain attribution and make money in the age of AI by partnering with them to take their uh, data sets, train ML models on them, and then make them available through our creative tools where uh, other people can use those to create new works with uh, the artist trained models. We use crypto um, specifically on the back end for uh, kind of durable attribution and then efficient payment rails for kind of uh, the, the sampling and kind of the, the, um, the, the revenue splits between um, kind of the new collections that are produced through our product. Um, and then before working on titles with my team, uh, spent a few years investing in Betaworks Ventures, looked at a bunch of stuff that we're probably going to talk about today. And it's really cool to kind of see all that stuff come to fruition over the last couple of years, um, or like, honestly, like 18 months. Um, and then, yeah, excited to see what type of chemistry Jackson, Smack, and I have here today, because it's the first time we got it, so it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, Jackson, that's, that leaves you. Cool. I'm Jackson. I am currently a venture partner at Paradigm, um, which is a crypto uh, investment fund. I spent about a year there as an investment partner, focused fully on investing and in kind of like the consumer bent of, of crypto stuff. Um, and then before that, I was an entrepreneur in residence at Paradigm for a little while where I was exploring some ideas. Um, so now no longer an investment capacity, but I still work with a handful of portfolio companies and on the side, I'm kind of taking my time to explore what I'm going to do next. Um, before Paradigm didn't work in crypto, I helped start an esports team called 100 Thieves. Um, but I've kind of always been obsessed with how the internet and technology enable new types of creativity. Um, and, and so that's kind of the, the angle through which I came into crypto um, and, and was kind of introduced to it through, through Fred Ursum, who founded Coinbase and Paradigm and, and was an investor in 100 Thieves. And we started jamming on kind of all the new ways that um, Internet incentives, particularly for creative people, could be uh, redesigned and changed with with sort of like internet native incentive systems and money and so forth. Yeah, I guess Jackson, you are literally living the where to build next right now, so we can we'll return to that in, in a bit. But maybe I thought I'd kick us off with one of like you know a, a favorite question, which is just the ten extra hours you know question. So I'm gifting you all ten extra hours per week of totally dedicated building time. You can explore whatever you want. Um, can't be what you're currently building. So, sir, and you, you, you know, you, you can't just spend more time, um, you know, iterating on titles. 
and doesn't have to be something that you know has any commercial ambitions really just could be like whatever something that's that's personally interesting to you follow curiosity um what what would you do so what, what would you do with kind of like the the extra time what would you build anyone uh, yeah i mean i i can just say like it probably it's hard for me to answer that question quite literally in the context that it would probably end up being exactly what you said right um but, <laughs> and then it probably would, maybe if i could have 10 extra hours right it would be like i would use that to like live more of like a normal person life um <laughs> of not building stuff but that's i think like the spaces that like i'm definitely more interested in the context of crypto is 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 is, is spending more time around uh, like smart contract design and mechanism design there. Um, I think like the more and more I work in the space, I think more and more uh, that that particular space is going to be like the defining characteristic of what enables crypto native businesses to uniquely kind of position themselves against like Web2 counterparts in a lot of senses. And there's a lot of those businesses kind of being explored right now. And I think like the way that we construct smart contracts and kind of play the tension between the tension of kind of like more efficient money rails and kind of speculation in a sense. Um, we kind of see both kind of comp like a lot of companies straddle between those two. I think that that's a really fun kind of space to continue to explore and get really weird and wacky with. Cause if you have 10 hours to kind of play with, right, it's what weird things can you kind of come up with and then just see what materializes from that and then try and kind of communicate those ideas to people and see like, how do they react to it? Like, what's the consensus around that? And how good of a storyteller are you around those concepts you're trying to design into really a novel kind of engineering space at its core? Can you give, can you give an example, maybe like make that real for people? Like what's a, some like smart contract design that you've seen that's interesting or that you'd be like interested in, in jamming on? Yeah, I mean, like if we ground it in the context of what we're doing with titles today, like, you know, our position was that like, attribution at the core of it. Like it's a very enduring question for, uh, uh, for creators and, and artists. And, and, uh, and one of the things that we wanted to center around was like, what does that actually mean in practice with, like, with smart contracts? And so a lot of pos companies position or like that attribution is like a catch all for everything, but really what we viewed it as is attribution is the center of like, how do you enable kind of two parties to interact with one another in a new way where you can use attribution at its core, which on in crypto is like a financial mechanism, right? And that like you can pass value between the two when you're acknowledging the connection. Um, and so for us, we were like, like what type of fee structures and payment structures for sampling and remixing media or using artist trained models, can you allow kind of, that creates a new type of uh, kind of engagement between the person that wants to use IP and the person providing it, right? And so that's that's something that we're actively exploring all the time is different ways to kind of play around what does attribution mean in the context of like a generative world um, and also enabled by crypto specifically. Jackson, Smack, any anything you'd you know do with your your extra time? Yeah, I think um, I, I, it's. It's funny. I, I, if I had extra time, yeah, I'd probably like to be spending it outside maybe, but I, I think uh, if I was going to spend that 10 hours building something else, it's, um, I, I think like the, the stuff that I find pretty interesting and like fun, which I don't spend as much time on today is, um, is actually in like g games, which I know people in crypto love crypto games and I have been a bit more bearish on them just generally um but i think like some of the cool mini game stuff that um there's like two two angles to it one is like just cool mini game things that are um what did i see that like draw the chart is an example of something that i saw that was kind of cool like that's that it's like the exact type of thing that people in crypto find like interesting and is something that's like very social and like you can i can see people playing things like that with their friends just as like look it's just entertainment anyway and people a lot of people now watch sports and like gamble on sports they don't care about just to like talk to their friends about it in group chats and so i see like little mini games like that are kind of cool um i think there's a lot of stuff outside of just like drawing charts literally squiggly lines that you can do um and then kind of like related to that which i have i don't i have less of kind of like an ai background that's something dempsey does and knows a lot more about but i do think there's like a world in which 
um, there's like competitive agents, like where you kind of build this agent on your own and then you send that out to compete with um, other people who build similar things. So I think of like the old school, like robot wars that used to be on TV, people build these ridiculous robots and it's like, all right, we'll put them in a ring and they like compete. I think you're going to see like, there's cool stuff that people will find interesting to build around like that type of stuff from a game perspective of like, let's build, like, let's set some parameters and some rules and then we'll each go off, build our own thing and then they'll compete and you kind of have like these time series based things. So I think that stuff is cool. Um, and probably not a, not a space that I spend a ton of time on, but if I had 10 extra hours, I would probably spend it there. Uh, I guess I'm, this is a little bit of a asterisk question because I probably do have the time and the fact that I'm not doing it might be telling. Um, that said, I, I, I think one, one idea that, um, has bounced around in my head for a little while. And I think we've seen a few examples of is, is crypto is an interesting, at least we, when we think about, um, social context. Crypto has an interesting nature in that you really don't need a ton of scale. Um, you can have a pretty small group of very interested people. And it, part of that is that usually there's a lot of money in crypto. Um, but that can produce pretty interesting things. Um, one of the things that kind of captured or has captured my attention um, for most of the time I've been paying a lot of attention to crypto is, is, is nouns. And I think nouns is a really good example of this. But I think there might be other versions of that too. I think we're starting to see the ways that you might be able to think about using um, open edition or 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 like crypto media style NFTs, combining that with something like party bid and or farcaster channels or things like it um, to produce sort of like social contexts that are on chain that have some kind of organizing principle that you might be able to do things with. Um, and that group doesn't need to be very big. I mean, you make you could probably make that case for farcaster writ large, not even just an individual channel. Um, but I think that's really interesting. And I think it, it kind of speaks to a broader trend we've seen happen in the internet, which is like, maybe the internet isn't about like the massive global village. We're all talking in the same room on Twitter. And instead it's about siloed, like niche at scale. And there's lots of non-crypto projects or products that do this well, like discord and so forth. But I think that would be interesting, um, particularly to the extent, I don't know, this gets a little into, or the, the fear here, it might be, it gets a little into a lot of the reasons people got excited about DAOs and then unexcited about DAOs. But it is interesting that you can have a group of people who have like a pool of money um, and can do things around it. Um, and so I, I think it would be cool to explore that, particularly beyond maybe just some of the like hyper financialized um, things folks have tried. Um, and it's it's been fun to, I pay a little less attention than I used to, but it's been fun to pay attention to the ways Nouns, for example, has continued to just like make movies and do all kinds of really weird things with a pretty small amount of actual people or attention and quietly plot along. Yeah, it feels like one of the the through lines that we've heard from so many people is like a pretty undervalued to just go deep on some of these like canonical interesting crypto things. Like if you want so try to you know spend some time and understand now and spend some time in the community, hang out in Farcaster. Like it, these are obvious answers, but there is just a lot of inspiration you you can draw from them. Um, if you're looking to build something new, but maybe let's let's we, we'll pick on you a little bit, Jackson, because I think um, you know it's probably a good time to to ask. So you you said you are you are you do have the time, right? You're like actively looking for uh, your, your next thing. I think you you have maybe mentioned at some other times like the importance of like shipping your ideas or like getting your your ideas like into the real world in terms of this like learning phase. Maybe just like walk us through like. I don't know, what are your, the principles that you're kind of applying to this, you know, where to build next for yourself personally? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think on one hand, like I'm a pretty big believer that like the thing you choose to work on matters a lot or like another, maybe even like more cliche or simple version of that would be like ideas matter a lot. I think there's a, like a lot of talk in Silicon Valley that, that it's all about execution. And I think there's a lot of really smart, otherwise smart people working on really dumb things to be totally frank. Um, but the paradox is that you don't really always know um, until you've like started to interface with reality a little bit or have the rubber meet the road. Um, I think one of the reasons, even to go back to the previous conversation, the previous example, like one of the reasons working with like a maybe small and maybe not that big, but like very real little like sub community or culture is that it's real and you're actually going to get real feedback and um, like the, the seed has to not be planted in like a theoretical soil. It has to be planted in real soil. Um, 
And so I think there's a temptation to just sort of like always model things in your head. Um, and in fact, like a lot of the times, I don't know, I speaking from a totally different context, like when I came into, when I, I met Nate Shot, who is this programmer and we, we started building this esports team. Like, I don't think it was that it was that exciting to me um, necessarily in my head, looking from the outside in, but there were enough interesting aspects of it that I was like, I took the first step. And then really when things get ex inter interesting and I think you know what to work on is when it feels like the universe is pulling something out of you. Um, and I do wonder if there's like a little bit of that missing sometimes in crypto, um, just because there are a lot of other signals that might not be totally correlated to something like product market fit. And that can range from things like ideology to financial incentives to um, just like the where the, the crowd seems to be going. And I don't mean to totally write those things off, especially with financial incentives. I, I think of anything speculate, leaning into speculation is probably like one of the most effective ways to get cl close to something happening in crypto. Um, but you're balancing that with like, am I making something people want? Um, so that's kind of like a, I don't know, it's still a little bit abstract, but that's kind of like a rough way I would think about um, trying to get closer to something that feels tangible. It's funny because I actually I, like one of the things I, I completely agree. And one of the things that I love about um, that I really appreciate about like somebody like Racer, for example, is that he's like always been someone who just ships stuff. So, like he he it's kind of like I'm going to like half build this thing, ship it, see if people care about it. And like that that's a much better way of doing things, in my opinion, than like kind of sitting by yourself doing working on this thing thinking like oh i think people will want this and like om almost try, like letting perfect get in the way of um like seeing if people actually want this thing that you're building and so you can see pretty quickly like hey do people care about this and like should i be spending more time on it what do people care about what's getting them excited you know maybe the next thing is the thing that actually um is this massive company i build and and talking to users and like actually putting things in their hands i think is a better way than um, I do agree. A lot of people in crypto, I think, get a little too, like, um, internalized where they think that, like, hey, I need to get this thing perfect before I do anything. And um, they're either working on the same problem like a thousand other teams are working on or uh, they're kind of like working on something that users don't necessarily care about, but they won't know it. And they're kind of like losing a lot of time by not um, getting out and like shipping something quickly. So... Yeah, that's I, I kind of agree with a lot of what Jackson's saying. I, I would even add, like, I think some of the people I admire most, um, they do a good job of like applying what Smack just said in the context of like an overarching like sort of um mission or vision or sort of like core belief that is usually a little bit more abstract. And those two things go together very well. Like an example of this that I, I somebody I really admire and have spent enough time with to kind of see is is Jacob Horn and Zora like if you look from the outside looking in at what Jacob's done over the last three years, like it looks like a bunch of kind of different things. Like, uh, and I think the way he would relate to it though, is that he had this kind of core belief that like Ethereum is this network that needs content. Um, and there are a million ways to come at that problem. And he's tried a whole bunch of them. And, and it's in the last, let's say nine months really started to find a, a, a ton of, or at least initial success with kind of like the open edition factor and a bunch of other components of, of sort of how do you create crypto media. Um, and, and so I think that like, it is worth having something that you kind of like, truly believe I, I, I don't know what that would be for racer, but I wouldn't be surprised if racer might relate to it in a similar way. Um, and they did steel cam and they did front tech and they've done a, they've done a bunch of kind of like attempts shots on goal at that thing under the principle that says like, I believe something to be true. I don't really care about the specifics of how I get there. And I'm going to be really, really open-minded and like really um, open to feedback from reality on what the right attempt to get there is. Yeah. I mean, if I were to add on into it, because it's like, I mean, all the things you guys are saying is like, if I were to attribute like our company's success up until this point, it's like you are saying like the 10 pull items right now, which is like at the core of it. Like I hear one question, which is, are you picking like an enduring question that has not only existed in crypto or AI, but also pretty much through Web2, right? And like that canonical example, or even before technology, right? What is the enduring question that you're kind of centered around? And like that, that feels like generally fundamental to like people, right? And what you're most intrinsically aligned with. And then I think too, it's just like 
like shipping cadence, right? It's just like ship a ton and like do a, and really care about your craft within that. Because like all the success that we found through our company at this point has just been directly correlated to how fast and how much we've shipped. Um, and that's just you just you just iterate right at the core of it. And then I think too, it's just like um, <clears throat> the one thing that you kind of get out of that kind of juxtaposition between shipping and kind of picking and during question, I think is just like it forces you to storytell around what is the core thing that you are like uh, kind of like positioning and sharing your worldview. I think like a lot of people like have this idea that like um, you put a thing out in the world and then it just like exists and blows up. But I think it, it takes like an enduring kind of like person to just say the same thing over and over and over and over again. And like you would how it allows you to like kind of try new ways by manifesting product in different forms that ask that kind of enduring question. Um, and I think like that's. I don't know what racer's example would that be for, but for like Jacob and Zora, like that's clear to me. There's like a lot of examples of that, I think. Yeah. This is, I mean, I feel like this is, I don't know, probably like the most important general topic in building things. It's also like the hardest one to really pin down, but if I were to like play some things back at you, I mean, at least on what we've seen is like on, on the one hand, you, you need to have like the big vision or the, or the enduring question, or whatever so if you don't like maybe that's to jackson your point is like you're not building so it's like it's a bad idea like or it's like not just generally interesting but then you, you also need to have something that you're going to find traction with like something that you're going to be able to get into people's hands get feedback like learn iterate move on to the next thing like you, you need that machine and I, I i'm not sure it's even useful to ask the question of like which mistake are people making more but i'll do it anyways and I, i'll i'll make a claim which is that i i actually think a lot of people who seem like they're maybe not building something interesting it really like it just seems like like they're not building traction on anything it's like i think a lot of people have some of these like big questions in their head things that they care about things that are and maybe like yes for sure on balance people should be refining those more. You care about three things, make it one. Like, you know, but I think actually this is the, not the missing piece for a lot of people. I, and I'll give you a specific example and Smack, I'll, I'll pick on you as well, which is that, you know, Smack, you just wrote an article, which is great about like crypto and healthcare, which totally buy, really interesting. Um, we, we see a, a massive amount of applications like from people building some crypto healthcare thing. Some of them are in the program, some of them are awesome. There's, there's also a lot of, and, and like, we can all agree probably that as a general topic, very cool. As a general question, great. Like, should we have better health records? It, does there need to be better, you know, decentralization or privacy, et cetera, in like our healthcare system, 100%. Um, so is that broadly speaking, a cool opportunity for crypto? I think yes, or at least, you know, I'm willing to make the personal bet that yes. If you look at the kind of problem that people are making, I think on, in, on balance there, it's just that, oh, I'm going to create like the decentralized healthcare record and I'm going to go straight at whatever, like the big, you know, existing healthcare record system. And, and that is just like, of course, dead in the water. Um, so, you know, I, I guess like maybe would you agree that, that like, you know, the bigger problem that people make is not making the initial thing small enough? You know, if we were to look on on balance across, I mean, that's not an interesting question. Feel free to take it wherever you want, but I, I, at least I, that's what we see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like um, it's it, like very related to this is something I'm always curious about when we talk to like founders is um, one is kind of like what is that massive, huge ambition, north star like, vision that presumably the whole team is always working towards? That like, hey, this is the huge vision we have. It's super ambitious. This is like what we care about. And then like, what are you, what is the like super short term stuff that matters the most, right? Cause like everything in between, it's not gonna be a straight line. Like things, things, it will not go according to plan between those two steps. But, but if you have like this thing in the back of your mind, which is this big ambition that everybody on the team is working towards and thinks about all the time, then it's like important to think, okay, what is like the, the next like six weeks? What is the next three months that like, we do these things well and and that opens up the door to like this new customer or, or this new segment and like it's very much like doing a lot of those short-term things well and right and like figuring out are there assumptions that um we thought were true for this big vision that we're realizing are not true um and so like i do agree with you that on the healthcare specific point 
like it is like the grand vision is wonderful and is a future that like we inevitably think will exist but one is how quickly can that get pulled forward like the timing matters and so healthcare is a hugely regulated space and so it's like you like it's not going to happen overnight and so like can you solve a, a very acute problem and maybe that's like a very specific rare disease that not a lot of people have but like you solve this problem for them in this way or um like that becomes like the way that you ultimately reach this and end like vision and so solving problems for people who maybe uh there's more friction for their problems or less people care about their problems maybe in the healthcare system that's just because by nature like why like let's create drugs for big diseases not rare ones by nature like where are you going to make money with people who have a lot of the same disease and so like it's solving very acute problems i think and then like over time when you look up you realize how much progress you've actually made towards this like end vision so that's generally how i think we like to see founders think and like they're very specific on hey these things really matter in the short term for these reasons um and like the grand vision is just something that is obviously there that everybody is in agreement with what it looks like and it's kind of like yeah that's like an end goal but but the things that matter are the very short term like execution things yeah I mean, maybe i can i mean i want to like uh, you know zoom back out i think you know these kind of broader points are really interesting but maybe um to kind of zoom back to like the the very ground floor let's talk about some products or experiments you've seen recently that you think are interesting so i'm um, sorry and i i um I, I guess we can maybe start with you guys launched an experiment pretty like but last month which feels pretty prescient in terms of like what you're trying to do so maybe just yeah. like just talk through like the experiment how, how do you how do you just decide to launch it and, and like what what do you think is interesting about it yeah um i guess to set context right it's one of the, the core components of our product is that you know, we work with artists to train fine tune models that uh, on their like largely private data sets. And then we make those models available inside of our product where other people can use them to create new things with. And those models are generally owned by one individual. But what's really interesting about Ethereum as like a vehicle for ownership is that it's kind of infinitely composable in the idea of how many people can own an individual asset. And so one of the ideas we had was, well, what happens when um, a group of people own an individual model, um, like an artist train model, or like a group of people can like actively own an asset that can live for other people to use. What are the the effects of that? And so the experiment that we've been running is called Model WIP, and it's a crowdfund to uh, raise money to commission an artist to create a new body of work, stylistically speaking, where we train a model on that work, um, and then where all the fees that are generated from the use of that model through our product point back into the crowdfund. And the thesis we have around that is that like, when people have ownership and things, they're excited for other people to use that. When you can actually get material money out of that, you're incentivized to help distribution of the things that are using that thing. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's really, again, back to the original point that we were making a few questions ago is like, how is attribution in our context or what's the enduring question that you're asking? What are all the different ways you can ask that within the context of your product today? And so model WIP is really just, hey, how can we get a community of people involved to own one thing inside of our kind of ecosystem of like accessible consumer tools and like what are the outputs of that? Um, there's Maybe other I can ask like a, a stupid question, which is like what what does owning a model like mean in this context? Can you like try to make that as, as simple as possible? Yeah. So um in our product um you can use like imagine kind of like a mid-journey style product experience where you can use mid-journey's like core model to produce a new image right um what happens is is those models inside of our product experience are actually owned by the individual like artists the fine-tuned model that we've created are owned by the individual artists that we've helped fine-tune and create that model with and so um in in practice what that means for the artist is that when that gets used um, and produces a new NFT collection on chain, we attribute that model in the new collection so that there's that enduring timestamp around what model was used or assets were used to create that new collection. And then secondarily, because we know the attribution, we can split essentially payments with the model of, um, from that new collection. And so if it generates any new uh, proceeds from it, we can actually pay to that address. And so 
um, in practice, what it means to like own a model inside of our product is that like it's available for other people to use and you can make money when when it's used to produce new value out of that. Yeah, that was very cool. I mean, it felt like it's a timely question to be asking for sure. Like, you know, how do we collectively own these models? I guess it's one kind of specific version of it as well in terms of like modernization and, and attribution as well. Um, Jackson, Smack, and any products you guys have been, I mean, it sounds like Frentech is one of them, Smack, if I can, you know, but anything else that you've kind of been playing around recently that changed your mind, surprised you, made you think about something differently? Um, on like product specific stuff, I think that there's, um, I, I saw that there's like some cool, I mean, this is my background is in I, also pre crypto. I worked in like structured credit finance. So I have a little bit, I like gravitate a bit towards DeFi related things just by nature. Cause I think I understand them quicker than, um, yeah, it's just by nature. I think like one of the things that's cool that I've seen recently is, um, some fi fixed rate lending products um, and fixed rate, fixed rate lending protocols and people trying to build um, new mechanic like auction mechanisms um, that are better designed to like match borrowers and lenders at more efficient prices. Um, so I think like the AMM model is cool. Um, but also I think just if when I think about kind of like five, 10 years from now, if we want to have like more sophisticated financial products and and lots of um things beyond what we have in DeFi today i think you need some sense of like fixed term products and so that opens up like new design space for things to be built on top of that i'm not sure that there's been a great mechanism for that today i've seen some cool auction stuff re recently which is which i think is interesting um so that's that's something i i, I saw recently in DeFi. um yeah, on the game side, like draw the chart is something that I was playing around with that I think just went live in the or has a beta that's gone live in the last couple of days. Um, yeah, those are probably the two things top of mind um, that I've been spending some time on. Um, I, the, the last point is kind of like, I find I, I, I'm like very interested in distributed energy, but I'm not sure that uh, that's like another <laughs> large scale, potentially many years in the future, uh, away problem. Um, but I am always, I'm always curious about, um, people who are messing around in that space. Yeah, I would just not, not a major ad. Um, and I know we already talked about it a bit, but I think one thing that Brentech really highlighted for me, as I kind of thought about it over the course of the last few months is there's a temptation to like be um, maybe like only thinking about speculation as you think about building crypto products or maybe a sometimes more idealistic view that it's like, oh, I'm not building for speculation. Speculation products are bad. Um, and I think one thing that Racer understands really well um, is he like harmonizes like this kind of interesting and unique point of view on consumer behavior and social behavior with a deeply crypto native understanding of how people in crypto think about speculation. And so he's sort of integrated the two. Like, I, I don't think Frentech is purely a speculation product nor purely a social product. I think it quite literally is both. And I also think that's one of the reasons it stands out maybe above some of the historical social token type things um, is that it really is a new type of behavior that is enabled because people want to speculate on things. And I, I suspect and that's not to say that I think there are a lot of other reasons, including the team ratio and trips, just having a unique point of view. Uh, I think base and privy and a handful of other pieces of infrastructure helped. Um, but if I had to guess where we'll see more cool, fun things like that in crypto, uh, at least on the consumer end, I think it'll be things that like embrace speculation as this wedge in to explore other novel design space um, and not vilify it, but also not let it just be the whole thing entirely. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's a good point. People like almost like you do see a lot of people be like oh no it's just speculation it's just speculation and and like people view it as this thing like evil thing um but really it's like this is most like it's crypto is just as much a social like technology as it is a financial one and so like to the point jackson made earlier it's it's a global technology but like it is uh almost like there are small groups that form around these things. So it's like you have this global audience and then people are able to find others 
like with similar interests or things they care about within this huge global sea of people who use crypto. And then they find these like little niches that are, are it, yeah, there's, there's an element of like a regionalness, if not thinking from like geographic location, but just like niche, um, niche, like social interaction. So I do, I do think like people need to embrace the speculative side a, a bit more than, than, um, than we kind of do broadly. One, one frame that I think is maybe useful is people obviously, Sam mentioned or, or Smack mentioned it earlier, um, the way that uh, sort of, I don't know, di different points of view on crypto games and how realistic or how close we are. And, and I'm not, I would say I'm totally cynical. I, I definitely think particularly some of the on-chain stuff coming out of Lattice is like at least theoretically interesting. I'm probably a little bit more dubious of most like Web 2 plus Web 3 games. Did I? I think my monitor just... Oh, we, can still, we still see you. Yeah. yeah oh, too. weird. Yeah, my, <laughs> I had like a power outage. Like, anyway, po the point I wanted to make is I think it's, um, you could actually think about much of the nature of certainly stuff like crypto Twitter and a lot of things happening in crypto as um, a game itself um, or like a big MMO. Um, and again, I think it's important to not just think of it as a giant casino or something. But I think one of my favorite posts that anyone's written in this ecosystem at all in the last year or so is Kobe wrote this piece called trading the metagame a while back um, that was very much a specifically focused on a financial bet in terms of how to maximize um, your success trading altcoins and NFTs and all these things. But he took this it, he took this idea that comes from online games, which is this sort of shifting um, best tactic and strategy that is like fundamentally a social behavior, like the game shapes the player and the player shapes the sort of like soft game that exists around it. And so I think there is a really interesting social dynamic happening on top of that. If you are able to like maybe see it, see it clearly or see the water. Um, and, and in many ways, I think people have made this analogy, like friend tech sort of gamified crypto to bear in a way that I think is really interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think the one thing to add to maybe on top of all that is like, you know, games by nature are like somewhat ephemeral, right? There's like some of the game platforms that have lasted, you know, years and years and years now. But, you know, a lot of the games that we dive into off of Steam and we play for two weeks really heavily and then we leave, like some of the like protocol design for a lot of these things are are, are intentionally almost ephemeral in a sense. And I'm not saying that Front Tech is necessarily designed in, in entirely that context, but it is a question, right? Is like how enduring is friend tech over the next like two years or whatever. Um, and I think like, you know, uh, what's interesting to me is it's like a novel form of monetization for this like ephemerality. And if you think about like where to build, like uh, everyone almost is like thinking from a builder perspective is like, how do I build things that are gonna last like 20 years? And like, that's, that's like a healthy question to ask, but there's also just like a lot of the great things that we have in our life are around for like three weeks, two weeks, right? And we look very fondly at that. And so there is something freeing about the idea of designing and building products um, that are ephemeral in nature. And it is very interesting to look at like protocol design and smart contract design as a mechanism to kind of capitalize that um, in the effort that you've put in there, right? So I don't know, I think like everything's a zig and a zag, right? And it's, I think that there are some interesting kind of things that are materializing on that front. Yeah, I mean, it's, it reminds me of a lot of like conversations we've had recently, which I think are very relevant to builders that are thinking about how to launch something new, which is like, how do you think about, you know, the ecosystems that exist within crypto as like initial, you know, playgrounds or targets, because it, it is like this very precise thing, like, like I think is what we're saying is like, it is really not, it's like kind of fighting with two hands behind your back in terms of especially like launching, if you're especially if you're launching a consumer app in crypto, like it is such a nuanced human behavior thing and that behavior is changing over time, right? So like a lot of times you're shipping at the edge of what people are doing online with money, with their friends, whatever. And so even finding success, and this is maybe like what we're, you know, you, like the point to make about Jacob or something, it's like, it, it's not even, oh, he's, he's done a bunch of different things. It's like, you know, be able to ship something interesting into the market as the market is changing. And that is like a really, really key skill. And a lot of people have been like thrown shade, I think, at people launching like the Farcaster client. But I, but now it's, I, I mean, you see people that are, you know, like one of our uh, investors, Linda, who now is like back to building, right? She's launching Bountycaster on, on Farcaster. And 
like very smart people that I think are making a conscious decision to go to a place where your quality of like reps is going to be pretty fast because you have an, a community that has existing norms, existing behaviors, and, and a lot of like energy, to, let's say, so to speak, to spend on on stuff that people are, are experimenting with in that area. So, it, you know, it feels like, like, again, if you, a lot of people think about, oh, this is a 20 year product, but you know, right now in crypto, I'm just not sure that is, it's gonna have the 20 year vision, but I'm not sure that's like the right way to think about building the product today. Yeah. I think too, one of the most interesting things about crypto overall to build in is just the idea that like, right now specifically it fundamentally represents something that was like a little bit non-consensus right and like if you look at venture as a category of all it's like you're looking for very non-consensus like things that like have a reasonable plausibility of being successful right and like and i think like you it just takes you like when you move into building startups at its core i think it takes like a while to break your brain down and realize that like almost all the like approach you should have is like some form of like doing something that is like fundamentally very interesting to a group of people, but not a lot of people. Right. And it's like, that's what I find really interesting about crypto overall is that like, when you go, when you build that community and you see all these group chats and you get in them, it's like, there are some like deep thinking that's going on about this. Uh, but you know, when I go back home to Portland for Thanksgiving, it's like not a lot of people are talking about any of this stuff yet, but that's like, that's the unique challenge and that's where all the reward can come out of it in a sense. So uh yeah i get really pumped up about that at, at its core yeah i think it's also funny that um there's there's definitely uh a difference when you talk to people of almost like a school of thought of whether hey should we be building for crypto natives when you think of okay like on chain games or tools or speculation games and and i want to build this thing for the people who are already comfortable using wallets and interacting on chain and like this is the audience that i care about and this is who i should be building for and then there's like this other school of thought that's hey that group of people is too small to care about like i want to build for the next x million users the next billion users and how do i get people who don't use crypto to interact with this stuff and like should i be building tools or should i be building interfaces that are like more um more like native to people who aren't using crypto products every day and uh it's just interesting because i think sometimes where founders can get a little tripped up is trying to build for both at the same time and it's like that that almost runs into like it, it. I think you kind of need to be a little bit more clear when you're actually in the cer certainly in the early stages of building a like a company or a protocol or a project of who who that customer is and like what the, what exactly they look like. And again, that, like shipping things is how you <laughs> how you like very quickly get feedback from those people. <laughs> yeah. One thing I would I would just add. Um, as a small note is one potential fallacy that or um challenged problematic thinking that I think some people bring is is this like incredibly technology forward approach to building products. Um, so you think about comments like how do we sort of like onboard more people into web three? I actually i'm I'm pretty sympathetic or or open minded to both of the outcomes we just discussed. so like, I think it's totally fine to build ex for a very, very small group of like hardcore extreme crypto natives. I think it's totally fine to build for a totally like wider group of people. Um, but in both cases, you're focused on trying to build something that they want, um, or at the very least, something that will um, enable a new behavior for them or whatever. And I think the the like, how do we onboard new people? Like, there's never there there've been very few businesses that have been really successful on the basis of like moving a technology forward. That's not to say there are none. And I, th I certainly think infrastructure is really important. Um, but I, I do think it's worth keeping that in mind, maybe just because I, th I find it's particularly common in crypto. Um, because crypto is or can be so ideological. And, 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 and again, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. But people can get really caught up in, in the technology itself. And it's a tribal thing. And we want more people to use crypto. And like, that's okay. But it's I don't think it's the core driver of why most products succeed. Totally agree. Yeah, I mean, maybe like I just wanted to go back a little bit and 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 smack like pick on you one more time, which is that I think a lot of what we've been talking about is like kind of the inability to predict all the little. It's like you want the vision, 
you you want the like way to to get that thing you know some version of that thing into you know the market and um I, it almost feels like entirely opposite i guess if, i don't know if probably if you aren't familiar uh smack you guys published like I think it's a crypto future i think it's called and it is ridiculous yeah. detailed <laughs> like so um it, it's, it's pretty cool definitely check it out it's like literally predicting every year in crypto from now until when like 2028 or something it's good if you have, like, yeah I don't know. I don't want, don't tell me how long it took you to do that, by the way. It's, that's, you know, a really a crazy undertaking. So I, I guess, I mean, what is the point in, in your opinion of doing something like, like, uh, you know, do you think more people should be, I, I totally appreciate that the goal is not to like actually predict it. It's like, yeah, you kind yeah. of think through from first principles, like what, what kind of is, you know, might, might happen. Like, do you, has, like what, what do you think is like the use of, of doing something like that? Yeah. Yeah, I think like, um, it, incidentally, it, um, the genesis of that came from something that um, somebody had wrote on less wrong for AI. So um, I don't remember who the author was, but they, they posted something on less wrong, um, just kind of like detailing out how they thought the next five years would look like in AI. And this was, I think, back in like 2019 or 2020, something like that. And the, yeah, I mean, really, the thinking around it is just, I, I think one of the problems also that we get into certainly in crypto is just these like very high level thoughts of hey people will care about this ownership matters um decentralization matters and people will care about it if we just like don't worry people will care and like there's these very high level thoughts on hey people will eventually care about this like um and i think we sometimes look at it from too high of a of like a thirty thousand foot view so the the goal was kind of all right if i have to like think how this industry plays out over the next like 12 months what do i genuinely believe will happen um and then just kind of using that as like okay if that happens what do i genuinely believe will be the next step and the point was more like trying to put quantitative numbers behind it of like how do i think about how big this industry can get or how small it will remain and like how to how do these things evolve over time and it was more just like a, a little bit of a thought exercise, but also a way to kind of like publish something to hear feedback from other people building in these spaces like, hey, this is completely unrealistic for these reasons, or hey, I'm doing something related to that. Um, maybe you think it's interesting. Uh, so I, I think it's more just trying to provide at least um, a little bit more of like a detailed view on like, hey, this is legitimately what I think will happen. And like, of course, it's not going to be like, it'll be hilarious to read in five years of like, wow, that was like so dumb or like this, this was this actually was right or, you know, that'll be fun. But it's it's kind of like more the process of doing it, um, which I think is like useful just for anybody, um, whether you're investing or like building is like almost solidifying and like putting in writing the things that you think will happen because it just feels um it feels a little more concrete and it makes you i think think through it a little bit deeper and like i don't know i think you it, it forces you to 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 like kind of express what you actually believe um which i think is helpful plus then people smarter than me tell me like hey dude this is like ridiculous completely wrong xyz and so like it's it's good honestly it's good feedback at the same time it's like we we don't ship products i kind of like we try to open source the things we think about and like the theses we have. And so we get feedback all the time from people who tell us why they think that's good or bad. Um, so that's just, it's, it's a similar process just from the investing side for us. I heard plenty of people made fun of me. So I, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't bother me. It's good feedback either way. I mean, if nothing else, it's a cool product. Like, you know, <laughs> literally just like the, as a content product, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah thanks. Well, I, I guess we're, we're coming up sort of close to, to time. If anyone has any, you know, other questions, drop them in the chat. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess, let's see. I, I think we kind of covered this one um, a little bit, but yeah, kind of like the choice between Web3 native and non-Web3 users. And I, I guess I did want to like with FriendTech, is it because I, I think smack you were saying like you know the risk is 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 not choosing one or the other but at the same time people were you know a lot of people said about friend tech oh like what made it so successful is 
the abstraction and like using privy and, and like making it easy and so whatever. So is that like, you know, the kind of, you're still serving like the kind of crypto native audience, but just like with a much better UX or it's like still that's kind of like web three native audience, you think? Um, I, that's how I viewed it personally of like a better user, like abstracted away some of these things, made it easier. Um, I'm sure it pulled people in. Well, I know it pulled people in who did not use crypto before because it was relatively easy. Um, but like, I, I, that's how I personally viewed it like that. Um, I think that people go through more friction too. like crypt, crypto people will are willing to bear more friction when they're using products just because, you know, I mean, we're used to it at this point. And so, um, yeah, that, 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 that's at least how I viewed it um, when I use it. Um, but I don't know, maybe Jackson feels differently. I don't know. I think undeniably it brought in new people. I think if you were to look at the pie chart of like the people currently using it, it would skew heavily mapped to like a certain part of crypto Twitter. Um, I also don't know that like, I don't know, I, I'm in crypto and like, I've been banging my head about the like wallet abstraction problem for like as long as I've I still like I I just like I truly think it's impossible that like more than 0.01% of the world are ever going to use ledger. Like I it's just not going to happen. And so I think like is my willingness to try a new crypto product especially if it involves a new kind of like modality or paradigm going to be higher if it's if I can log in with Apple? I think it is. Like yeah, if it's a new DeFi product, I probably like no I'm probably going to be very comfortable using like my current scheme. Um, to answer the question explicitly, and so anyway, back to the early point, like, I think, I think some of what Sam or Smack said is, sorry, some of what Smack said is, is certainly right. But like, I also just don't know that, um, one, I don't think it's like a total barbell. I think there's a spectrum here. And I think it probably just depends a lot on what you're actually trying to do in the case of a friend tech, maybe actually having multiple people along a spectrum improves the product quality for different reasons and the types of people that are going to bring, going to bring more capital versus, interesting ideas and spec like whatever like to me I, I think it's probably having a it's probably worth having somewhat of a specific audience in mind when you build a product and that's going to inform how you think about like non-web3 versus web3 um farcaster is another example of this probably to some degree which is like the most people on farcaster are somewhat crypto native increasingly they're making it easier to use and without a ton of sophistication. And so maybe they're moving moving the Overton window. Um, I don't think you need to draw a clear line in the sand, but I do think you want to kind of consider it. It's long story short. I, I like one way I think about this too is like Web3 versus non-Web3 is just like, I mean, we made a conscious decision when we kind of like started working like really on crypto native products. So we're going to focus on like the crypto native community specifically because of like the threshold that existed with self custody wallets in the early experiences, but really was never necessarily about that. It was just an omission that we made in a sense. And really what our entire focus has been around is just like the core numbers you're seeing and the product loops that you've built inside of your product. Right. And so if you look at like friend tech, it's like whether or not they had built privy in and all of those like senses, I don't know, like it, the product still like has a very fundamental kind of like value proposition for people that are using it. And so they were like, okay, well, Privy just offers like a uniquely more accessible way to kind of come into that, that lowers the threshold of like, what is the concept of like a wallet in a sense, right? And so I just think that like everyone in the building context should just think about the core product loops that they're offering and like, don't take necessarily like wallets as an excuse, right? Because it's like, if you can break through the noise a little bit on that front, it's like, you do have something quite compelling that like, and we can all make the assumption that like while like the wallet infrastructure and a lot of that's going to get incredibly like it's going to improve dramatically over the next you know six months alone right so uh yeah i think it comes down to like the product loops that you're building over anything i think most all the successful products in the space have kind of nailed a lot of that um uh like at the core of it yeah yeah so I kind of like i mean maybe like slightly like the wrong question to be asking potentially like web three versus non web three probably or at least like not the primary question like primary question would be you know what specific audience are you targeting like you know what is the the product that you're delivering to them and then it's like you know underneath that you know are you going to need to serve people that are newer you know older within their crypto journey it's probably like the right order of of operations 
Um, I want to be respectful of everyone's time because you know you are busy and you, where to build next in crypto is an is an active uh, question for for all three of you. So let's let's leave it there. Um, th thank thanks for for joining. Thanks to everyone tuning in live, and thanks to everyone that's you know uh, you know checking out on the, on their own time. Um, we will yeah next week is launch week, so we'll see some cool new products shipping at the edge here, and um, yeah lots lots more to explore. So thank, thanks. Thanks, oh, yeah. thanks, Joey. Yeah, yeah. thanks.